Jamie, fantastic to get you back on Real Vision. I think you've been on once before in the past. Thanks for having me back. You're looking forward to this. Yeah. Um, you and I have not chatted, but I started a, kind of a big tweet conversation about NFTs and thinking through the space. And you reached out and said, listen, I've gone through this journey and maybe we should chat about it. And I thought, brilliant idea. So firstly, just give people a bit of your background and then we'll talk a little bit about your journey into crypto as well. And then we'll start getting into the meat of it all. Sure. So, I mean, I guess I'm most famously known for having <clears throat> created Wall Street Bets. Uh, I did this 2012, but for my professional trajectory, my career, I've been pretty much an entrepreneur. Right? I started a business in the tech and in the tech industry when I uh, graduated college, and then I w worked my way over to finance. I started working kind of corporate, worked my way up to quasi-governmental, big multinational banks. And then I just gravitated back to to being an entrepreneur and always in the field of finance and, and technology. Uh, but my obsession with finance and the stock market obviously has been there throughout this entire time and, and recently shifted my focus into the world of crypto. Uh, and I'm kicking myself for making the, well, I correctly made the, the prediction that crypto was like a cryptocurrency back in the day, but I didn't reevaluate. And so I didn't realize that the whole blockchain movement is so much more than just a, a coin that goes up and down. So yeah, so tell me about that journey then, your discovery and understanding of crypto itself. Because, you know, what was interesting about linking back about Wall Street Bets is you built a community, which was amazing, right? And then once you start to get into crypto, you realize it's all about communities. And so it must have been a kind of natural place. But talk us through the journey of that. It is. Yeah. And look, I mean, communities exist everywhere, right? I think people are just tribal in nature and whether it be with Wall Street bets or Wall Street talking about these high risk things or crypto, or if you're into hobbies like mountain climbing or <laughs> buying artwork, whatever it is, there's people tend to kind of hang out and go to clubs and do these things. And so it's, I, th I think you'll get that anywhere. Uh, it's, it's particularly uh, impressive in the world of crypto, right? Like there is just this this kind of understanding and language and, and 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 kind of bondhood with it, but I I started looking into crypto kind of by chance. I get these offers all the time. Hey, plug my coin or whatever, and it's just to me it's uninteresting, right? Like it's it, once 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 Bitcoin was able to make it big and get adopted, I'm like, cool, they made it. Now it's just a supply and demand function. But there's this like this parallel ecosystem that exists right with very high sophistication for plugging into all aspects of the financial system creating new tools and creating new access to it which is like unfathomable right i, I still don't think we can appreciate fully what is going to happen we the the the, the first few steps is yeah let's make an asset or a coin or whatever now let's make a tokenized stock so that we can buy these things on the blockchain or maybe we'll do, make them synthetic and kind of mirroring some of this, this uh, these mechanisms that exist in finance now. But I can really see how there's a whole new set of tools that can get created thanks to the, the, the flexibility and security behind blockchain to allow, I don't know, just really, really cool stuff. Like I, I, I tend to speak so abstract, right? Like the other day I was thinking, when I was looking at how these synthetic stocks work. And it occurred to me that it would be at, at the click of a button today with technology that already exists, right? If I owned a ski resort and I wanted to hedge against lack of snowfall, right? But, but to a very specific granular level, I could create, once again, today with what already exists, a token of sort, which essentially short sells inches of snow, right? So if you need 60 inches of snow to have a good base and have a full mountain that year, then I short sell that, right? And then if, if it only snows 30 inches that year and then you get a, a smaller showing of people to your resort, you lose money there, but then you recover some of it back with your short position. Uh, and this is all done through smart uh, smart contracts on the blockchain automatically, like it's ready to go. And so how cool to be able to have that type of thing available to someone that's not going to be able to just, I don't know, buy some some strange insurance. I don't even know what you would do. I don't even know how I came up with that example, but I don't know. It's just cool stuff. No, but that's a classic idea of the ability of the smart chain to create derivatives that are specific as opposed to, because the CME developed the idea and like, you know, people want to hedge, you know, corn um, here, you know, with the, with the, the snow idea, it's great because you create a two-way market 
because there's people who are going to want to bet, you know, meteorologists want to bet that the snowfall is going to be higher. You want to hedge it. Other people want to short it. And before you know it, you've got this liquid or relatively liquid market in something that's phenomenally useful that came out of nowhere. Yeah, no, and, and and I think that's just the tip of the ice for you. You can daisy chain these things together, lump them up, combine them in different ways that are really sophisticated. Uh, given the nature, like that, that you have, you know, I was asked just recently in Texas, like, so what about this concept that people want to take these? Well, let's just call them NFTs, but um, you know, these these tokenized. Uh, uh, whatever I'll call them NFTs, even though it's not the, the term where well, they want to do it with real estate, right? They're like, so what's the difference between having that in a rate or like a REIT? And, and so I said, well, I, I guess it, right now, technically nothing, but these, these particular tokens, these particular investments can be shifted, right? So you can own apartment three, the bedroom in the back or whatever, or if you own it in, in Venice and water levels are rising, you can program things there so that it makes some kind of change. Like, I don't know. The, the, the flexibility and the granularity that can be employed automatically and securely is just, uh, it's extremely exciting. And I think that that a lot of what blockchain can do, I don't think it'll ever replace, uh, def uh, sorry, what is it, the, the traditional uh, trade fi uh, or Wall Street, but I think it can coexist and it can make it better. You know, like the, take the simplest thing that, that to me always makes me laugh. Uh, you have 24 hour, 24 seven, right? Like that's the blockchain doesn't, doesn't sleep. And that's the way that the markets should be not, not because you have gamblers at three in the morning, but because it, closing them poses a systemic risk. We had um, not too long ago, this thing that happened with China and Evergrande where they, you know, going to default on their thing. And so the markets freaked out. And by Monday morning, even when futures, uh, you know, all these things gapped, gapped down because everyone was panicking if you're a hedge fund that's not trying to take risks and trying to be careful about these things, these prices may have gapped over your stock price, right? And just throwing your entire risk model out of whack. And then I have to kind of run around and, and hurry up and rebuy and sell on this thing and the other. And, and it should be a simple thing. You just some, it's, it should be like a setting on a computer somewhere. It says like, oh, tra you know, trading hours equals 24 seven, right? Like it's, I think we have to go out of the way to close them, right? So that's just a, a really, really simple thing. There's a gazillion other stuff, you know, like uh, leveraged ETFs. Man, was I blown away when I saw what the crypto version of leveraged ETFs are. Uh, they figured out like, so, so leverage ETFs have this nasty side effect that if the underlying is kind of trending, they lose their value and they go to zero with a hundred percent certainty. And these, these, uh, crypto versions are like, no, 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 no. We're going to use smart contracts to change the rules so that the leverage is going to be variable. It's going to change based off of what the market's doing. So if this thing is trending, then you're going to go full leverage. And if this thing is ranging, then you're going to turn down the leverage essentially Oh, mitigating, almost eliminating that nasty side effect. Like, why doesn't that exist on Wall Street? Right? Like, such a simple concept. It's the pace of innovation in this space is staggering, right? So, one of the things I looked at and I've talked a lot about is that the internet back in '97 had 150 million users, same as crypto does now, and it was growing at 63 percent a year, which is the fastest adoption of any technology the world had ever seen. Crypto is growing at 113 percent a year. It's twice as fast. And as you and I know, it's like a black hole that's attracting so many people and so much talent, solving really specific problems, but using immense amount of brain power. And so it's it's almost impossible to keep up with because there's so much innovation. I've never seen anything like this before. No, it's it absolutely is. And I think it's I think I like your analogy of a black hole because probably it probably rings true in a sense that you didn't quite mean it. Uh, which is, in my opinion, also part of the reason why it hasn't grown even faster, right? Which is like people look at it, they don't understand what's in it, they can't see inside of it, they know that it, you know, they, they know that it's there, right? And then to some capacity on a humorous level, once you're in there, you can't get out. That's right. right. The gravitational pull gets you in the end, right? <laughs> yeah, but no, it's th th and that's one of the things that crypto could learn, and I'm sure that you know, I, I know everyone's trying to create this thing a lot easier to digest, right? Most people don't care about or don't want to care about or don't know about all these bells and whistles that come with it, right? Like you'll see these arguments that that, may, that are made. Oh, when is Robinhood going to give us the keys for the private wallet or Coinbase or something? Like, 
I get that. I understand why having the security behind the coin is part of the reason why it's even here in the first place, right? But but most people don't want to download the MetaMask and configure the network with the RPC and the number of des- you know like and, and then plug it into this thing. Like it's it's just so robust. If I can't tell my mom how to buy these things, like it's still not there yet, right? If you can just open it, click buy, and just have it be there, that that is as soon as crypto is able to solve that, right? And like I said, I think they're working towards it, uh, and also. It, well, in, in order to help that happen, you have to accept the fact that some people may want to give up some of those things that, that some people consider important for simply uh, for, for just the experience, the use of the, the ease of access. I think that's going to be really powerful. But yeah, there is. The, I, I, I think that the the analogy is really correct because once people are in it, right, the reason why they can't get out is like, wow, I did not know this was possible. I thought it was just. Dogecoin, right? I thought it was just whatever coin. And I thought they were just ICOs and, and it's not, not by any stretch of the imagination. I used to be one that said crypto equals to whatever coin. Now I get annoyed when I get all excited about crypto and people say, so you're bullish Bitcoin? Is that what you're trying to say? And I'm like, no, that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> I mean, I just try and use digital assets as the term as opposed to crypto now. Um, uh, and what's amazing is happened to a lot of us from the kind of hedge fund finance world, and I presume it's happened to you, is once you see this, nothing else has the same attraction. Nothing has the same opportunity set in the traditional financial world. And nothing has the same innovation and nothing has the potential for reward as much as this. And so traditional finance becomes pretty dull. Yeah, uh, yes. I mean, like, we can't discount the fact that if it wasn't for traditional finance in the first place, we wouldn't have Bitcoin or computers for that matter. You know, like, th- th- there's a, we can't underestimate the the importance that these capital markets have had in the history of being able to create these things. But I do agree with you that, that and, and, it, and I share that sentiment 100%, right? Like, now when I go look at stocks it's like oh okay now this thing is up now this thing is down now this is the thing that has a function of supply and demand and a price that gets associated with it and it's super linear and and it's lost its uh it's it's still interesting right because uh there's a component of behavioral markets and 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 uh the way things are interconnected so i can still find the nuance when i'm looking for it but for the most part it is a heck of a lot more exciting to see uh, the the number of things that are available, the number of variables that exist, and the number of ways that you yourself can plug things in, and 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 opportunities, yes, to to make money in a super creative way. Like when I found out about when I found out about these automated market makers, this um, it's these kind of this part, it's central to the DeFi world. This, this yeah, like Uniswap of, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I was like, this is brilliant, right? Like it, it, it's it. it solves a lot of problems right like you give up we have centralized exchanges we have to say even on the blockchain which mimic those of of regular markets where you have your order books and all sorts of different things and the mechanics are are pretty darn similar to it and they're the ones that i'm really familiar with right but when i saw this one i'm like well this is cool this one doesn't go down right like this one's just you know and and the risk is just uh uh decentralized really in its most purest form and and you have this really robust market, and then I'm giving up some things like the types of orders that I'm able to place or whatnot. But it's just a very simple, elegant solution, um, not to replace it, but just it's, it's an option, right? Like, and it's and it's I don't know, it's exciting, and I'm and I'm so into this now. Now I want to see what else somebody somebody's going to come up with, so that I can get mad for not having come up with it myself because it's such a simple thing and so useful. Hey, if you like this clip. Be sure to like and subscribe for more crypto related content. Also, be sure to check out the full interview and more only on realvision.com slash crypto.